Today we're out here in sunny Southern California taking a look at the all new 2019 Volvo V60. The V60 is Volvo's smallest wagon on sale in the US and this looks like a mini me version of the Volvo S90 which is their largest wagon. Volvo is really dedicated to the wagon format and they plan on bringing not just the two wagons V60 and V90 to the US but we're told that there will also likely be a Volvo V60 cross country in the future to go with the Volvo V90 cross country which is the larger wagon. Since this is basically just the wagon version of the Volvo S60 sedan, the video that you probably watched very recently on our channel, we're going to go about this video a little bit differently. We're going to try and condense it down to just the differences between the sedan and the wagon right over here. The front end design is essentially the same between the S60 and V60, although there's some very minor tweaks here and there. We have the classic new Volvo grille right here, and you'll notice that the hood is very horizontal. That was one of the new design cues for this generation of the S60 and V60. We have the Thoris Hammer headlamps, basically borrowed from the larger sedans, although again, the shape is just a little bit different. Now these are active LEDs, LED high beams and LED low beams, and they steer. And then we have fog lamps down there at the bottom of the bumper. In terms of overall dimensions, this has actually become a little bit narrower than the last generation of V60. But at 187.4 inches long, this is definitely longer than the last model. And it's really noticeable when you take a look at the back end because we get a lot more cargo space and more rear passenger legroom than we had in the previous generation. The overall stretch is about five inches. And that places this on the long side of the compact luxury category. In case you're wondering, the S and the V are both exactly the same length. So if you're worried which one will fit better in your garage, they're actually going to fit just about the same. Another interesting touch is that we actually have a bumper that sticks out a little bit from the rear end instead of a very chopped rear end appearance. Now the overall style of the S60 and V60 are a little bit different than the S90 and V90. You can see right back here that the lines are a little bit tauter, a little bit sportier looking in this model. Although we still have this very raked rear glass which does cut down on cargo practicality a little bit. Spoiler right there on top. From the side profile, you'll really notice that this generation of the V60 looks much more like a rear wheel drive vehicle than versions of the past. And that is really obvious when you look at this proportion of the vehicle right here, the distance between that wheel and the front of the door right there. The long hood proportion isn't quite as overall space efficient as Volvo's of the past, but it really does give the V60 this very elegant long and stretched proportion. As you'd expect, the rear end design of the V60 is very much the S90's mini-me, but with lines that are a little bit crisper, a little bit tighter, as you'd expect in a vehicle that's supposed to be a little bit better performing. We are driving the T6 model, as that badge indicates right there, and then we have all red rear tail lamp modules. These are LEDs, but we don't have amber turn signals in the US like we do see in Sweden. I think that's a little bit of a pity. I prefer the amber turn signals, and Volvo tells us that this was a style choice, not a functional choice for this particular market. The reversing lamp is found right here in this small section of the rear tail lamp module. And if you're wondering about the rear fog lamp, that is right there on this side, but on the driver's side of the vehicle only. At the bottom of the bumper, we have two different exhaust tips. We see the round ones that we saw in that tan model just a moment ago. And then we see these integrated ones over here in the inscription trim. So the bumper does change a little bit depending on which version of the V60 that you get, pretty much just like the S60 as well. Under the hood is one of the places where we find some of the key differences between the S60 and the V60. Because under this hood, we find only two drivetrain options for the United States. In other world markets, there are a few different combinations. Things start out with a T5 engine, which is a four-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 250 horsepower and sends power to the front wheels only. We then have a T6 engine, optional, which produces 316 horsepower by adding a supercharger to that same basic engine. The T6 engine uses the same basic eight-speed automatic transmission, but power is sent to all four wheels by a standard all-wheel drive system in that particular model. One thing that I think is a real pity is that we don't find Volvo's excellent plug-in hybrid systems under this hood in the United States, although they will be available in other world markets, we're told. So if you want a 400 horsepower plug-in hybrid V60 wagon, you will have to move out of the United States. Unusual for a non-crossover vehicle sold in the United States, the V60 comes with a tow rating. Volvo says this is actually rated to tow 2,000 pounds. So if you plan on carrying a small pop-up trailer with you, there's no need to buy one of Volvo's crossovers. You could actually buy a V60 wagon instead. The model that we're looking at right now is a momentum trim of the V60. This is the base trim. So we don't have the up-level seats that we do find in the upper-end models. So two-way lumbar support, no adjustable thigh cushion, 
those are things you will find in the upper end trims. We do have a two position seat memory, however, a manual tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion, and the passenger seat has the same range of motion as the driver's seat. Volvo seats are some of the most comfortable in the industry, and that really does apply to these seats as well. Although I do have to knock a point off because this particular trim doesn't have the most adjustable seats available. When it comes to rear seat legroom, this has received the same generous rear legroom that we find in the S60 sedan, quite logically because the overall dimensions are the same. But the big difference is in headroom. I have about a half inch extra headroom, and that means that even though our model has this enormous panoramic moonroof, which as we'll see when we get inside is much bigger than the one that we see in the S60, I still have a generous amount of headroom back here. It's still very, very comfortable. And if I move to the middle seat, I still have more than enough headroom to sit very very upright back here. That's one of the bigger differences between this and the S60. When it comes to the overall legroom, I would remind you that this is a compact luxury vehicle, not a midsize luxury vehicle. So if I sit behind this front seat that's all the way back in its tracks, I have about one inch of legroom left. That is definitely generous for the compact segment, but obviously less than the midsize segment. The rear seats fold in a 60-40 fashion. I'm a little bit disappointed that we don't find some of Volvo's 40-20-40 folding seats here because that would have increased practicality. Although right here behind this center armrest, we do actually find a ski pass-through, which is kind of an interesting touch. The last generation V60, I think, put a little bit too much emphasis on sport back styling rather than cargo practicality. And that was my big complaint about it over the V70 wagon that I actually owned before because that had a very vertical rear end. This generation of the V60 still looks a little bit raked forward, but it actually has a more practical profile overall that's really obvious when you open the rear hatch. Back here, we find nearly double the cargo capacity of the S60 sedan when you include the underfloor cargo space and this large cargo area right back here. It's really obvious when you look at a roller bag like this. This is a 22 inch roller bag. You can easily fit a large number of them right inside. Volvo tells us that even though this is a little bit narrower than the old V60, they were really targeting cargo practicality back here. It is worth noting that the S60 on which the V60 is based actually has one of the larger cargo areas in its segment and a lot of that practicality translates right here to the V60. We have electric releases for the rear seat back so you can fold them from right back here or from that second row area as well that helps improve cargo practicality. And if I lift up this cargo area load floor, we actually find a spare tire back here, which is something that was missing in last generation Volvo models. Volvo has not forgotten their dedication to cargo practicality, so we find a 12 volt power outlet back there, some straps and hooks to help you hold your cargo down, some grocery bag holders right there on the side, a roller tonneau cover, and if we zoom in all the way up there to the ceiling, you'll see some little holes right there. Those are retainer clips for some of Volvo's cargo management solutions that helps keep your cargo from flying forward in the event of an accident. There's also a nifty feature where you can cause this roller cover to roll up in that position or have it right down there in a more traditional flat position. As we look around this interior, keep in mind that we are in the base momentum trim, so we do find some slightly nicer touches inside the upper end trims. We have this enormous panoramic moonroof, which is much larger than the one that we see in the S60 sedan. It actually goes right back there to just over the rear passenger's heads. The reason this panoramic moonroof could be so much larger is simply because the roof is longer, and in order to provide structural rigidity to the S60, they had to give it more of a sunroof and a half than a complete sunroof like we see in this car. Up front, we have height adjustable shoulder belts and fixed height headrests. That's really something of a Volvo hallmark, but a nice touch is that in this generation of the S60 and V60, we actually have leather wrapping to the headrest on the back rather than having this be a different kind of material that really gives the interior more of a premium appearance. Volvo has really been upping their game when it comes to overall interior design. We find a little Swedish flag right there on the front seats, and you notice that the front seats themselves have this interesting combination of leather upholstery and a cloth insert, and the cloth insert is sort of this eccentric pattern. They're calling this city weave. You can look down there at the bottom cushion, you can see that we do have the base seats in this particular model, so they don't have the extending thigh cushion. As you'd expect in a luxury car, the entire front door panels are made from soft touch plastics, except for the small area right there around the bottle holder. We find more of that upholstery right there in the door panel. 
And this particular vehicle does not have the top end audio system. So instead we do have a Harman Kardon branded system. You can see that logo right there on those front speakers right next to the door lock and unlock button. And because we're not in one of the upper end trims, we have a pretty standard injection molded dashboard. So if you were looking at the S60 video and you wanted to know what the dash looked like without the leather stitching on top, this is basically what that looks like. We get some metal trim right there, separating the two layers of the dashboard. This has sort of a linear effect to it rather than some of the knurled textures we see in some of the other Volvo models. You can of course get wood trim in here if you'd so desire. And one thing that I'd like to point out that surprised me a little bit is that the glove box door is actually hard plastic. With so many soft touch plastics around, I thought that was a little bit unusual. If we move on over to the center of the dashboard, we find the standard census infotainment system. This has a new processor for 2019. So if you'd experienced some of the older systems and you thought that they were just a little bit too slow, then know that this system is a little bit faster than those models. We have standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integrations. That is a sales benefit for this versus some of the competition. And the overall design of the software is pretty intuitive. It functions basically like a big tablet computer. We even have little directions on there to help you use the system if you're wondering. You can touch these quadrants, have it expand that particular option. We have a Bluetooth phone interface right there. You can get right back there to playing your tunes on your iPod if you so desire. And then we scroll left and right for various system options like these integrated apps right down here. We have Spotify, we have Yelp, we have Glimpse, we have Wikipedia. These are all built into the software and then they would suck data off of your paired smartphone. Below that, we have the controls for the infotainment system right down here, track forward, backward, volume knob. All the climate controls are right there in that census system. Hazard light button, defrost and defogger. And then below that, we have a pretty typical console shifter. Drive is all the way to the back right like that. You can hear the parking sensors beeping. Manual mode over to the left. We push away from the driver for up, pull towards the driver for gear down. We then have a small storage cubby right here in front of that. And then the cup holders behind that area. These also have a lid to close them in matching trim. There are two round cup holders and then one smaller square cup holder right there. The start stop button is a toggle like we see in some of Volvo's larger vehicles. We have a roller knob right here for the drive mode. You can either click it down and then touch the touch screen or you can roll it around to change the drive mode electric parking brake button, and then an automatic brake hold button. Between the front seats, we have a padded center armrest that opens to reveal a moderately sized storage compartment. You could easily fit large smartphones in there. Two USB ports, one integrates with the system, the other is charge only. Behind that, we have our rear heated seat buttons. You can see that center console that sticks out right back there. On the driver's side, we have basically the same LCD instrument cluster that we find in other Volvo models. This is optional in the S60 and V60. I'm a little bit surprised by that since they made it standard in the XC40. We have a moving map display right there in the middle, speedometer and tachometer, and a limited amount of ability to customize this particular display, but not quite as much as we see in modern Cadillac models. We have basically the same steering wheel that we find in Volvo's larger vehicles. This particular one is wrapped in two-tone leather, so we have a different color around the outside than on the inside. These both match different colors in the vehicle. On the left side, we have the controls for our radar adaptive cruise control system, as well as pilot assist, which is Volvo's semi-autonomous driving software. And then on the right side of the wheel, we have the controls for the infotainment system. And then these also double as controls for that multifunction LCD. So we press this little button right here, and then we use this to toggle around the menus in that LCD cluster. There's also a voice command button there up top. This particular steering wheel does not have shift paddles on the back. Volvo has long been known for their practical family touches, and we find one over here on the driver's side. This is a button to turn on and off the child locks on the rear doors, rather than having to fiddle with a little knob that's right there on the door itself. Moving up to the inscription trim of the V60 gets us an upgraded interior. We see these upgraded seats that are more comfortable. We have the extending thigh cushion, the four-way lumbar support, available front seat massage, etc. The big interior upgrade is this leather stitch dashboard here that really adds an extra premium touch to the interior that we really don't see in many of the other entries in this particular segment. It really helps dress things up a lot. And then lower down on the dashboard, we have real wood trim. This is kind of an open pore stripey themed wood. And of course, the wood trim continues down here on the center console, and of course, the roller cover right there over those cup holders and 12 volt power port. So we're out here with the new Volvo V60 wagon, and unfortunately, we're stuck in Los Angeles traffic, and of course, drivers doing crazy things right in front of us. But hey, that's what Los Angeles is like, I'm told. But as you'd expect, the V60 wagon, 
drives basically like the S60 sedan. That's quite logical when you take a look at the curb weight figures. Volvo tells us that there's really no weight penalty for getting the wagon instead of the sedan. In the past, the wagons typically weighed just a little bit more than the related sedan. Although it is likely that in this generation of the S60 and V60 that the weight balance is actually probably a little bit better in the wagon than the sedan. Really the only big difference is that we have this larger panoramic moonroof that I showed you earlier and it really is nice in here. It gives the uh, interior definitely an airy feel. And the other thing that you'll notice is that we have a little bit more road noise because the cargo area is open to the rest of the vehicle. It's one of the things that we see not just in station wagons but also in crossovers versus related sedans. When it comes to acceleration, the V60 should be getting exactly the same scores as the S60. If you get the T5 front wheel drive model, 6.3 seconds, 0 to 60 is what you should expect. The T6 version should be 5.3 seconds, 0 to 60. Now at this point in time, there is no T8 hybrid version of the V60 in the United States, but we're told that one might come later. There will be one available in other world markets. If that were to come to the US, then this would be approaching BMW 340i performance or actually perhaps even a little bit better at around 4.4 seconds, zero to 60. As with the acceleration scores, braking distances should be basically the same in this model. Volvo quotes 115 feet, which sounds pretty reasonable. We won't know, of course, till we can get this on our own home turf in order to actually do some official zero to 60 and 60 to zero tests. When it comes to overall handling ability, the V60 does very well, just like the S60. And because the wagon segment is so much smaller, really there is just the BMW 3 Series wagon in the US at the moment. And actually with the new 3 Series coming soon, I expect the 3 Series wagon to not be available for a short while until BMW releases that new model. This really has very little natural competition. And I would say the most direct competition for the V60 wagon is actually going to be some of the compact crossovers that we see from BMW, Mercedes, Audi, etc. This definitely has a more pleasant and more car-like feel than something like a Q5 or a GLC or even Volvo's own XC60. Wagons like the Volvo V60 give you the practicality that you'd expect out of a smaller crossover, but the driving nature and driving seating position of a sedan, that is the important difference between this and something like a crossover. So even if Volvo did bring a cross-country version of the V60 to the United States, the overall seating position is still going to be a little bit more reclined, a little bit more sedan-like, and you aren't going to have the same visibility on the road as you'd find in Volvo's XC60. But you will have the benefit of the handling ability and handling driving dynamics of the sedan, and they're definitely better than the average crossover in this segment. This doesn't have a rear wheel drive biased powertrain, so it's not going to oversteer in corners. It's going to have a sort of a gentle understeer there. There's very little body roll going on here. There's also very little tip and dive compared to the average crossover. In many ways, this feels an awful lot more like the BMW 3 Series wagon than something like an X3 or the XC60. In terms of overall ride quality, the V60 is basically the same as the S60 as well. So this is not going to be as soft as the Buick Regal wagon. That is a little bit softer than this but it is not going to be quite as firm as a high performance compact car in this segment, like a BMW M3 or some of the M performance variants in the BMW lineup. This is instead a very middle of the road, very good balance between handling and a decent ride. This is not gonna jar your teeth out, suitable for longer highway journeys, but when the road starts to bend, it also manages to hold the road very well. Now, overall grip is let down a little bit by the tires that we have on the V60 base. If you were to put grippier tires, this would definitely handle better because the curb weight is right in line with the rest of the competition and Volvo's new drivetrain layout has actually moved weight to the rear of the vehicle, helping this feel more balanced and more poised out on the road. In terms of overall cabin noise, we do have a cabin that's a little bit louder than the S60 logically because that cargo area is open to the car. So I expect this is probably going to be about one decibel louder than the S60 sedan. In terms of overall fuel economy, this particular model is EPA rated preliminarily for 25 miles per gallon combined, and that seems about reasonable. We've been driving this mainly in stop and go traffic out here in Los Angeles. We've been averaging about 19 miles per gallon or so, which is right in the city range for this vehicle. So that, that 25 miles per gallon seems pretty deliverable depending on your balance of city and highway driving. At this point in time, we don't have official pricing for the 2019 V60 just yet, but Volvo has given us a little bit of guidance, and there actually have been some temporary Monroonies in the vehicle with preliminary pricing on them as well. The wagon upcharge is going to be about $2,900, which is about the same as the 2018 model year. So this is going to be about $2,900 more than the corresponding S60 sedan. 
That means that the wagon should start right around $38,000 or so. And if you want the T6 all-wheel drive model, that should start at the $43,400 price point that is on this particular spec sheet right here. If you want the inscription model, which is this darker version, not the one that we were initially showing you, that is $6,000 that has the upgraded interior and you put that on top of the base pricing. You'll be able to get both engines, the T5 or the T6, in the Momentum or the Inscription interior. And the Inscription interior is probably where I would go for the V60 wagon if I were to be putting my money on the line for this car. Now, if you want all of the options that are on this particular model right here in front of me, and that would include things like the ventilated Napa seats with the massage functionality, uh, we have the heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, the metallic paint. This particular model does have the adaptive chassis system in it, 19-inch Inscription wheels and the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. You're up right around $61,500, which is on the upper end of the scale for the compact sedan and compact wagon category in the United States. And that's because there really are no other compact luxury wagons available in the US other than this and the BMW 3 Series wagon, which is likely going to go on hiatus because the new 3 Series is coming soon. I have to say that if I were shopping in this particular segment, I would get the V60 wagon and I would probably get it over the corresponding S60 sedan because this is a very, very practical vehicle. I've always loved Volvo wagon practicality and that's why I've actually owned a Volvo wagon in the past. We get this cargo area back here that is about the same size as many compact luxury crossovers, but you have the driving dynamics, seating position, and this overall style of a luxury sedan as well. And I actually really like this overall sporty look that Volvo has given the V60 wagon. Now, I do wish it had a more vertical rear window. I do like that particular look from Volvo's past, but they have again given us a little bit more practicality than in the last generation V60 because the actual opening itself is a little bit more vertical, a little bit less raked than the previous model year. Versus something like the BMW 3 Series wagon, obviously you'll have to wait until we can get our hands on one of these for a complete week so we can do our usual battery of tests, but I would definitely pick this over the 3 Series, mainly because of the interior refinement. This interior is definitely a class above the current generation BMW 3 Series. We do expect to see a new BMW 3 Series coming soon, and it will likely have a wagon variant as well. That new 3 Series does have a much improved interior and improved driving dynamics as well, but until it's available, we won't be able to comment on how it compares to this all new V60 wagon. And at the moment, with the current BMW 3 Series, this would definitely be my pick in the United States. Be sure and let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Also hit the subscribe button so you can be updated on all of our reviews, including a full and complete review on the V60 wagon and hopefully a V60 cross country when we can get our hands on one coming up soon. Until then, go ahead and click that button at the top of your screen so you can subscribe to this channel Click on those related videos down there at the bottom. And as always, I'll see you next week.